I'm Brianna Richardson. And I'm DeAndre Richardson. Welcome to Fellowship Bible Baptist Church and welcome to today's worship experience. If you're in the sanctuary and this is your first time worshiping with us, be sure to visit our visitors table and fill out the visitors card. We'd love to get to know you and connect with you. And if you're watching online and this is your first time viewing our service, go ahead and put a one emoji in the chat. We have a community of Victorian viewers that are ready to greet you and show you some virtual love. Also, if you're in the sanctuary, our nurse is open in the east wing of the dome in classroom one for children ages one through four. If your child is younger than 12 months, the nursery is open for them as well, but a parent or guardian must be present. So if you're not familiar with our church, you're probably wondering what we at Fellowship Bible Baptist Church are all about. Here at Fellowship, our mission statement is simple. A great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission makes for a great church. So Brianna, what is the Great Commandment? The Great Commandment can be found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40, which instructs us to love the Lord thy God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and to love our neighbors as we would love ourselves. And here at Fellowship, we're all about love. We may be a really big church, but we have a small church feel because we believe love is an action word. That's right, and the Great Commission can be found in Matthew. Good morning, Fellowship. I'm Brianna Richardson. And I'm DeAndre Richardson. Welcome to Fellowship Bible Baptist Church and welcome to today's worship experience. If you're in the sanctuary and this is your first time worshiping with us, be sure to visit our visitors table and fill out the visitors card. We'd love to get to know you and connect with you. And if you're watching online and this is your first time viewing our service, go ahead and put a one emoji in the chat. We have a community of Victorian viewers that are ready to greet you and show you some virtual love. Also, if you're in the sanctuary, our nursery is open in the east wing of the dome in classroom one for children ages one through four. If your child is younger than 12 months, the nursery is open for them as well, but a parent or guardian must be present. So if you're not familiar with our church, you're probably wondering what we at Fellowship Bible Baptist Church are all about. Here at Fellowship, our mission statement is simple. A great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission makes for a great church. So Brianna, what is the great commandment? The great commandment can be found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40, which instructs us to love the Lord thy God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and to love our neighbors as we would love ourselves. And here at Fellowship, we're all about love. We may be a really big church, but we have a small church feel because we believe love is an action word. That's right. And the Great Commission can be found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, which instructs us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here at the ship, we are very serious about saving souls. We have several different ministries here that are solely purposed to bring new souls to Christ. And we're also serious about making disciples, teaching those who are saved about Jesus Christ Christ through the Word of God. In fact, every Sunday at 8.15 a.m., we have a variety of Christian enrichment classes. We have classes on the Kingdom of God, the Old Testament, and worship, just to name a few, all purpose to bring us closer to God through the Bible. We're also very intentional about reaching outside the four walls of our church on a regular basis. That's why every Monday from 4.30 to 5.30, we serve the Houston County community by giving away free food. That's right. Our food bank ministry is stationed every Monday outside of the FBBC gym, ready to serve Houston County. All you need is your ID and proof of Houston County residency. All right, Bree, it's about that time. Are you ready to begin worship? I am so ready to begin worship, and I hope you are too. We're continuing our 44th church anniversary celebration with our core, age 46 to 59. Stay tuned. Worship will begin shortly.
Praise, praise the Lord, fellowship. Praise the Lord, fellowship. Oh, come on, give God the praise, fellowship. We come to celebrate a risen Savior. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's alive. Somebody give God the praise. Our God is alive. Our God is well. Our God, keep on blessing us. Aren't you excited about your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Aren't you excited that he got up on the third day with all power, all power, with all power, with all power in his hand? He healed the sick. He raised the dead. We are here to celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Praise God. How many of you are thankful? How many of you are thankful? How many of you are thankful? Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we need to thank you, Father, just for another day, Father. Just for another day in your presence, Father. Father, we don't look back on yesterday, Father, but we're going to praise you for this day, Father. Because your word said this is the day that you have made. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, for this church, the Fellowship Bible Baptist Church, Father. The church that has hold up the bloodstained battle for you, Father. The church, Father, that has come this far by faith, Father. Leaning and depending on your word, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, for our pastor, Pastor Morgan, Father. Thank you, Father, for his, his, his wisdom and the knowledge, Father, that you have given him, Father. Thank you, Father, for his leadership, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, for all the members here at Fellowship, from the youngest to the oldest, Father, because we all have purpose on our life, Father. Father, we pray for all the sick, all the bereaved, all the shut-in, all the ones behind prison wall, Father. And, Father, we just want to say thank you. We want to give you all the honor. We don't want to give you all the glory, Father. And, Father, we will forever, Father, praise and worship you in all time. Let us say amen. 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 We, we ask everybody to remain standing as we get ready to sing the morning hymn. Amen. Good morning, fellowship. We're going to sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus, Because He First Loved Me. Come on, let's sing this song. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing His word.
Happy Sunday, Fellowship. I'm Cheryl Johnson, and I'm here with your ministry highlights. We are halfway through February, but there's still a lot happening here at the ship. Let's see what's happening this week. If you have experience in human resources, we need you to volunteer to be a part of our HR team. Again, if you have any experience in human resources, submit your credentials to our Chief of Staff, Derek Martin at dmartin at fbbchome.org. The Men in Black will travel to the State Farm Arena in Atlanta to see the Atlanta Hawks play the Milwaukee Bucks on March 30th. The cost to attend this event is $100. This will cover round trip transportation, entrance into the game, as well as a special VIP experience. Registration is open to the first 50 men. To register, visit the events tab of fbbchome.org and click on the flyer that you see on your screen now. For more information, email mib at fbbchome.org. Our Trailblazers, a ministry for men and women aged 60 and up, will travel to Savannah, Georgia on June 10th to take part in Savannah's infamous gospel dinner cruise. The cost to attend is $130 per person, which will cover round trip transportation, shopping along River Street, and of course, live gospel entertainment and dinner on the Georgia Queen. To register, click on the events tab of the fbbchome.org and click on the flyer that you see on your screen now. For more information, email trailblazers at fbbchome.org. We are in the month of February, and this month we are celebrating 44 years of rocking here at the ship. We kicked off the celebration with our Game Changers, and last week our Lit Nation Youth Ministry showed up and showed out. Today we'll hear from the core, the age group for people aged 46 through 59, aka Pastor Morgan's group. And next week on Founders Day, we'll close out the Trailblazers age 60 and up as they wear their royal blue. We'll officially begin our celebration with our Go Revival. That's beginning this Tuesday, February 20th through the 22nd at 7 p.m. nightly. We have three amazing preachers that are coming to bless the house. On February 20th, we'll have Pastor Frank Harris Jr. coming to us from the Second Canaan Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. On February 21st, Pastor Mark Moore Jr. of the Spirit and Truth Church in Atlanta, he'll be with us. And and closing out the revival on February 22nd will be Dr. F. Bruce Williams of the Bates Memorial Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. And of course, everything culminates by celebrating our founders, Pastor Willie Reed and the mother of our church, Mother Gloria Reed. Our Founders Day celebration will be on February 25th at 10 a.m. And our guest preacher will be Reverend F.D. Sampson, Pastor Emeritus of the Friendship Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. Well, family, that's all that we have for this week. But for more information on these and other exciting events, visit our website at fbbchome.org or follow us on all of your favorite social media platforms so that you can always know what's happening here at the ship. Or if you would like to have information sent directly to your phone, you can text the keyword CONNECT to 478-249-5426. Until next time, have a great week. One month, that's what we get, one month. Where the world acknowledges our uniqueness, one month we bullhorn black excellence, black excellence, here's a statement. We are black history, but you ain't given us one month. One month doesn't cover my ancestors bursting speeches out their lungs. One month doesn't cover what my ancestors have done, one month doesn't cover my ancestors being in the sun, nah. You ain't giving us one month. Melanin isn't just for February. 28 days can't contain 400 plus year and the leap year giving us the 29th like spare change. I've seen our black be brilliant. 
I've seen our black be innovative. I've seen our black be leaders. I've seen our black be prized. I've seen our black go to the sky when Bessie Coleman got her pilot license to fly. I've seen Shirley Chisholm take her black to Congress. A woman with that much guts would make some people nauseous. Douglas, comma, Frederick, once enslaved, used his black to pave a way to let freedom ring. Once freedom rang, Dr. Martin Luther King had an integration dream. He knew Bleeding red was the only time we accomplished equity and equality. Isabel Bomfrey was a sojourner with truth, a black abolitionist and a woman right activist. Don't act as if Harriet did not conduct our black from an underground railroad with no train tracks. Kamala Harris has her black in office as the first black female vice president. It's evident that our black can become mayor. Warner Robbins 2022, LaRonda W. Patrick, first black female sworn to chair. I wouldn't dare give our black one month. One month can't represent me. Our black, my black, her black, his black got too much history. So I'll say it again. We are black history, but you ain't giving us just one month. is defined as any central or important part of a thing. It is important that we stand together and strengthen the foundation that has already been laid. We are the core and we are ready to work. Our mission statement is simple. The core ministry is designed to provide spiritual, physical, social, and economic enhancement with the intent to facilitate personal wholeness for members of the Fellowship Bible Baptist Church, ages 46 through 59. One of our key goals is to connect our heartstrings to yours by helping to meet the needs of our community. We are excited to move forward. Our core values drive behavior and form beliefs. We believe that there is more from the core in 2024. Allow us to reintroduce ourselves. We are the core. <laughs> Introducing the core, the core, the core, the core. Introducing the core, the core, the core, the core. Introducing the core, the core, the core, the core. Yeah. We were created to worship. We were created to pray. We invoke. Your holy presence, our God, your purpose be raised. We were created to worship, we were created to pray. We invoke your holy presence. I need everybody age 46 to 59 come up on the stage right now. Everybody, wherever you are in the building, come, come. Age 46 to 59, come. Brothers, help these ladies up the stairs. 
If you're in the balcony, we waiting on you. Uh-huh. Y'all show some love to the core of the Fellowship Bible Baptist Church. Y'all know my crowd, the largest crowd, so I gotta give them time to get up here. That's all. Don't, don't hate, don't hate, don't hate, don't hate. They coming, they still coming. If some of y'all gotta take the choir stand, take the choir stand. Just give them a little space. They're coming, they're coming. This the 46 to 59. This the 46 to 59. Together we stand, the body we fall. We're gonna hold each other through it all. Yeah. Yeah. Together we stand. Yeah. With a call, with a call, with a call, with a call. Together we're celebrating 44 years of the Fellowship Bible Baptist Church. Those of you that are online, if you're age 46 to 59, even if you're not a member of our church, you own credit today. Because you're part of the baddest core group in the, in the church. That's the pastor's group. I pray for all the rest of y'all, but this is my people right here. I pray for y'all. I pray for y'all. <laughs> if you're online, if you're online, just if you're in the age of 46 to 59, just post, I'm part of the core. I'm part of the core. I'm part of the core. Listen. Uh, this month we're celebrating 44 years of our wonderful, wonderful church. And uh, amen, amen, amen. On the first Sunday, we had our game changers. They was cute. They was cute. They was cute. It was all right. They, they, they did the best they could. They, they did the best they could. They did the best they could. Last Sunday was our Lit Nation. All of our young people. Next Sunday is going to be our Trailblazers ages 60. Y'all cute. Y'all all right. Y'all did okay. Y'all did okay. Yeah. Did all right. They can only do so much. They can only do so much. They can only do so much. <laughs> but in the center of it all is the core. <laughs> I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that we have a church uh, where we can celebrate each other. And uh, we got pride about being members of the Fellowship Bible Church. Come on, y'all. Let's give God praise. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. You may be seated. Now, let it, wait, 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 wait. Did y'all get a good picture of us? Did y'all, anybody needed another picture? Sharika, did you get another picture of us? You, you're on staff, so you're staff. You got to get a picture of all of these wonderful. Look at us in our black and white and our formal attire. Uh-huh. I'm just going to give you all a minute. Just going to let you see what, what class looks like. This is what, this is what class looks like. 
Y'all got any classy people around here? All right, let's, let's get a good look. All right. Yeah, come on. Get a good picture of all of us. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, uh-huh. <clears throat> I told y'all not to play with us. I told y'all. All right, everybody, go back to your seat. Awesome. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord, everybody. Let's make sure we help our ladies down. This is the day that the Lord has made. I said, this is the day the Lord has made. I said, this is the day the Lord has made. What I really said was, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're so thankful to have this opportunity of worshiping our risen Christ. And we praise God for all that has transpired in our worship. Would y'all do me a favor? Would y'all do me a favor? I need you to do it quickly. Speak to three people around you, whether you know them or not. Say good morning to them. Say good morning to them. can't handle me today. They can't handle me. Y'all may be seated. Be seated. One of the things that's important at our church is that we don't just talk to God, but we talk to each other. Amen. We speak to each other. Amen. Amen. Um, wasn't that a wonderful black history presentation? Come on, let's show some love for that. That was absolutely fabulous. <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. Let me just remind you, uh, our Lit Nation Youth Church is going on across the street uh, for our young people. So if you have young people, uh, basically 18 and under, and we have a, a group, a, group, a new group now called The Vibe for 19 and 24. Uh, we have a group that's ministering across the street, so you're more than welcome to have your young people to be a part of that celebration as well. A couple things I want to bring to your attention as we're moving forward in our worship. First of all, let me thank you all who were here on yesterday as we celebrated the life of Michaela Cheney. Uh, she's the daughter of uh, Tamika Cheney. Some of you may have heard about her situation uh, in the news. Uh, whether you continue to pray for that family, uh, whether you continue to help them uh, in prayer, and let's continue to surround them with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yesterday also, uh, I want to thank those of you that attended our WOW Health Fair on yesterday that was sponsored by our Women of Worth. Also, our Lit Nation uh, took a visit to the Tubman Museum in Macon. Uh, that was a wonderful, wonderful exchange. I want to thank um, our, own, uh, our own Harold Young, who is the first African-American uh, daily director of the Tubman Museum. First one in the history of the museum. Come on, y'all, give it up for him. First one in the history of the museum. Amen. That's my guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to thank our, our Lit Nation leaders for taking our young people uh, to the Tubman Museum. Uh, it is a black history museum, and they got a great trip of education uh, at that museum. So we want to thank all of you who undergirded that effort. And then also, yesterday, our men in black 
our men in black went to Atlanta. Come on, show some love to our brothers. Amen. Amen. They, they went to Atlanta to the uh, National Center for Civil Rights yesterday, and God took them and brought them back safely. Amen. 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 So we praise God for that. Hey, y'all, this week, it's a big week. 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 We are celebrating our 44th church anniversary with our uh, Go Revival. You all already know uh, we launched an objective a couple of months, well, about a month ago, that by this time next year, we want to pay off our mortgage. Come on, let's give God praise for that. I want to ask and remind every member of our church, if you are here in Warner Robins, if you are an E-Crew member, or if you are just a person that's really been blessed by, <clears throat> by this ministry, I want to ask you, I want to remind you, I need every single member of our church. Y'all, we are currently up to 4,013 members of this church. Amen. So that means we ought to be able to get this done. Amen. Amen. We ought to be able to get this done. I need every member of our church, every member of our church, between now and February of 2025, I need for you to sacrifice a gift of $1,000. You have an entire year to pay it, pay on it, pay towards it, whatever you choose to do, whatever frequency you choose to do it, um, so we can get this $2 million liquidated so we can go on to do other things for God. Amen? Amen. So again, if you are watching this worship, you're a member of our church, an E-Crew member, local member, in person, whatever, you know, uh, people say they're members now and they got their own definition of member. Uh, well, I'm going to need you to put your money where your membership at. <laughs> and let's do it together for the glory of God. Amen. This is over and above your tithes. You have an entire year uh, to take care of it, and uh, let's do it for the glory of God. Listen, it all works better when we do it together. I said it all works better when we do it together. Amen? So this week we're in revival beginning on Tuesday. Uh, you already saw uh, the lineup of guests that we have available uh, this coming Tuesday. Listen, y'all, I never want to uh, invite people to our house and we're not home. Amen? So if you do nothing else, I, I want to urge you and ask you to be here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. We're going to start on time. Um, those of you who know that historically we church real good, but we don't take all night churching. I said we don't take all night churching. We've got a great list of pastors that are going to preach the gospel for us. It's our revival week here at our church, and I want to see you here uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's going to be a great, great time in the Lord. And then we're going to culminate our month celebration one week from today. It's Founders Day 2024. Amen. And we're going to be remembering and honoring our founding pastor, the Reverend Dr. Willie L. Reed, Sr. Amen. Amen. And um, we're going to honor him by honoring the wonderful woman that the Lord placed by his side. Mother of our church, Mother Gloria Reed. Come on, church, give God praise for her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some of you have already asked, and so I want to let you know if you're led of God next week to bring a personal gift uh, to Mother Gloria Reed, you are free to do that next Sunday. Uh, I'm sure uh, as God lays, lays it on your heart, uh, we want to show her, number one, she is not never will be forgotten amen 
Amen. And that we love her in Jesus' name. Next Sunday, one of the classic preachers in the country, the Reverend Dr. F.D. Sampson, will be our guest preacher. I promise you, you want to be in the house on next Sunday as we conclude. And then also next Sunday, we're going to be blessed, church. We're, this coming weekend, we're going to be ordaining six new deacons here at our church. Amen. Amen. And so you have an opportunity for them to be presented on next Sunday. It's an exciting time at our church, and we're thankful for it. I'm honored, church, when we always have guests to come at our church. If you're here for the very first time, this is your first time worshiping at Fellowship, would you be willing to stand? We're not going to put you on the spot. We just want to appreciate you. Come on, church. First time visitors. Come on. They're all up in the balcony. First time visitors. Thank you so much. Hey, fellowship, greet these that are standing. Greet these that are standing. Show them some love. Make them feel welcome. You in the balcony, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. And we appreciate you in the love of Jesus Christ. All right, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. Let's have church.
Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you got anything in you, let it out right now and stir up the gift. Stir up the gift that's within you. I need you to give God the breast praise you got for the next 10 seconds. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Tell somebody I got something on the inside that's moving this way on the outside. Because every time I think about what God has done for me, I've got to give him praise. Now let everything that's got breath come on and give him glory. Oh, praise his name. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. He's a keeper. Your response is, yes, he is. For he will keep you in perfect peace. We feel like church in here. We feel like church in here. We feel like church in here. Oh, bless his name. I want you to take the next 10 seconds to think about how many times he kept you. And he's keeping you right now. And he's keeping me right now and he's keeping me right now yes he is yes he is I'm a living witness he'll keep you when you don't want to be kept he'll keep you when you can't keep yourself Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise one more time. It feels like good church in here. It feels like good church. We celebrate the work of Jesus Christ in our lives. Let's go to the word of God. If you remain standing for the word of God. Bless his holy name. I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the gospel that has been recorded by Mark. While you're landing there, Mark chapter 8, I'm always thankful uh, when pastors stop by and worship with us. And we all know on Sundays, uh, it's really not. Uh, a time available for pastors just to worship and be poured into because Sundays we're working <laughs> but um, one of my sons in the ministry is here today all the way from Detroit, Michigan and uh, he stopped in to worship with us and uh, just be poured into, into here um, Regrettably, his father made his transition yesterday uh, in Augusta, Georgia, and uh, he's here, and I think we just need to strengthen him. Amen? We just need to strengthen him. Church, can you thank the Lord for Pastor Ennis Monroe? Pastor Ennis Monroe. Come on, let's strengthen him. Let's strengthen him. We strengthen you, sir. We praise God for you, man. 
pastor of the First Baptist Church in Southwest Detroit. And uh, we thank God for him uh, worshiping with us today. Mark chapter number 8. And it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us this context of Scripture beginning with verse number 1. That choir showed his sang, didn't they? Now, I know y'all didn't think I was going to just let that slide. You know? that's, that's my core choir. Amen. They did their good singing today. Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 8, verse 1. Bless you. <laughs> Mark chapter 8, verse number 1. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and said unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way. For divers of them came from far. And his disciples answered him, From where can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground took the seven loaves and gave thanks and broke and gave his disciples to set before them and they did set them before the people and they had a few small fishes and he blessed and commanded to set them also before them and they did eat and were filled and they took of the broken meat that was left seven baskets and they that had eaten were about four thousand and he sent them away I want to tag this text, this bread is for everybody. <clears throat> you may be seated in the Lord's church. content and context of this passage demands for us to bring attention to the historical fact that this feeding of the 4,000 was not the feeding of the 5,000. This is not an edited version of the same event. This is a totally separate event, totally separate moment. And the historical details affirm that Jesus fed two massive groups of persons at two different times. The feeding of the 5,000 geographically happened at Bethsaida. The feeding of the 4,000 happened in Decapolis. So their place was different. The feeding of the 5,000 involved two fishes and five loaves of bread. The feeding of the 4,000 involved seven loaves of bread and a few fishes. So their provisions were different. The timing of their proximity was different because with the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus was only with that crowd for one day. We read in this passage in the feeding of the 4,000, Jesus was with that crowd for three days. So the place was different, the provision was different, the proximity was different. 
But most importantly, church, the people were different. The feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle that is recorded in all four of the Gospels. And that crowd was predominantly Jewish. The feeding of the 4,000 is only recorded in Matthew and Mark. And that crowd was predominantly Gentile. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, it gives purpose and credence to why this is even recorded in Scripture because the larger narrative that Jesus wanted us to see is that he being the bread of life was not exclusive to the Jews. He being the bread of life was exclusive to everybody even a Gentile or non-Jewish audience. You will recall Jesus said in John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the Jews. That's not what he said. He says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish have everlasting life Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 19 that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself Paul said again to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 2 and 13 that now in Christ you who were sometimes afar off have been made near by the blood of Jesus Christ and he has made two one that Jesus Christ though he was on his natural side Jewish was not just sent to be the Jews savior he was sent to be bread for any and everybody regardless of race, sex, creed, color, or political persuasion. That's all to be good news to somebody <clears throat> because that means that heaven isn't just a Jewish place and hell isn't just a Gentile place. This bread is for everybody. No matter what walk of life you come from, no matter whether you are black or white, male or female, Jesus Christ made sure that his salvation was for every body. And thus we see the larger point of why the recording of the feeding of the 4,000 is even there to share with us that this was Jesus' goal that everybody would have an opportunity to partake of the bread of life. And thus it causes us now to backdoor into this passage on something quite interesting. When we read this reading of the 4,000, we discover something different from the feeding of the 5,000. In the feeding of the 5,000, it was prompted by the disciples. The feeding of the 4,000 was prompted by Jesus. Look what Jesus says in Mark chapter 1, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Listen to what he says. They took note of him, and as a result, he took note of them. We don't have a clear reason, a specific reason in this context why this crowd followed Jesus for three days into an uninhabited desert. It would suggest that the fact that they followed him into this uninhabited desert says something powerful about why they are there. Though we don't have a specific reason as to why they're following Jesus, here's what we know. In Mark chapter 1, Jesus Christ cured a man that was demon possessed while at church which means he cured him of a demon in the crowd 
of a synagogue. Mark chapter 2, Jesus cured a man of palsy in the presence of a crowd that had filled the a house so much to the point that they couldn't get the man in and they had to go through the roof. Mark chapter 3, God healed a man with a withered hand in the presence of a synagogue crowd. Mark chapter 4, Jesus taught the parable of the sower to what the text calls a multitude. Mark chapter 5, a woman with the issue of blood was healed of her issue and she had to press through a crowd. Mark chapter 6, it's Mark's version of when he fed the 5,000 and there were 5,000 people there, not counting the men and the women, and he fed them in a crowd. Mark chapter 7, he takes a deaf and dumb man and heals him aside of a crowd. So what we can basically deduce that by the time we get to Mark chapter 8, Jesus has been building a crowd. And it stands to reason, church, that the reason why they follow Jesus is for the last eight, seven chapters, they've made up in their mind that I don't want to miss him in case he decides to have another message or another miracle. I thought that ought to have been somebody's testimony in here. I don't want to miss church because Jesus may decide to heal somebody. I don't want to miss church because the word of God may come forth and I don't want to miss what he may say or what he may do. I've been walking with him for all of this entire book and I don't want to miss anything that God has to say. I hear Bishop Paul Morton ringing in my spirit. Here's what he would say. God, whatever you doing in this season, don't do it without me. If you blessing somebody, I want to be around. If you healing somebody, I want to be around. If you waking up the dead, I want to be around. If you decide to dispatch favor, I want to be around. Whatever you do, don't do it without me. I haven't seen you heal palsy. I haven't seen you wake up the dead. I've I've seen you give sight to the blind. I've seen you cure demons in a crowd. Everything, everything, Mark says, everything Jesus has done has all been in a crowd. So it suggests, church, that by the time we get to Mark chapter 8, they're following Jesus because they don't want to miss what he may say or what he may do. Here's the good news, church. Y'all ready? If you give attention to Jesus, One day he going to turn around and give attention to you. You, you, you. you don't know how to get happy, so I shout myself. If, if you walk with Jesus, Jesus will turn around and walk with you. If you, if you give attention to Jesus, Jesus may turn around and pay attention to you. Here it is. I didn't make it up. It's in the text. Jesus takes note of who took note of him. Here's what he said. He, he said, he says, I've seen this crowd and uh, they've been with me for three days. That's their dedication. They have nothing to eat. That's their deficiency. And they've come from afar. That's their distance. Listen to what listen to Jesus' notes. He said, he said, he said, I, I notice y'all been walking with me, and I notice that you're dedicated to me. And I also notice that you gave up something to follow me. <laughs> see, see, that didn't touch some of y'all. Because some of you follow Jesus as long as it's comfortable. But if you've really been walking with Jesus for real, something ought to be given up on your life. 
as proof that I've been walking with Jesus. Look what they gave up. They gave up food and familiarity. Talk to them, Morgan. They, the Bible says they came from a distance. In other words, they had to separate themselves from the familiar in order to walk with Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, you haven't had a real walk with Jesus until you had to give up something on the inside and walk away from some familiar people who only knew you carnally and couldn't know you spiritually. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but here's the first point of this text. If you miss this, this might be your blessing for the whole day. Jesus proves in Mark chapter 8 that I will eventually reward commitment. I see what you gave up for me. I see how far you've gone from me. I've seen you when you endured people talking about you because you was faithful to the gospel. I saw what you had to give up. I saw you wouldn't run with your people. And if you be faithful over a few things, I'm going to make you ruler over many. I declare in this house that God is about to reward your faithfulness. I seen you be there when nobody else was there. I saw you serve the church when everybody talked about you. And I'm telling you that eventually if you stick with me, I'll turn around and see your life. Encourage somebody and tell them, neighbor, God is going to reward your commitment. No, they didn't get happy. Touch somebody else and tell them, neighbor, God is going to reward your commitment when you didn't want to serve you were there when you was mad about it you were there when nobody else was there you were there God is going to reward your commitment I saw what you lost for me I saw the distance you've gone for me and I realize you have nothing to eat. First thing this text is telling the teachers, y'all, is that there is a reward for divine commitment. I said there's a reward for divine commitment. You know, that's a, that's a cuss word these days. Because nobody likes to be committed to anything. Especially this generation, they're only committed to themselves. But you'll find out in life, the stuff worth having doesn't come quick. Preaching here, Tolan Morgan. The stuff you really need to be proud about is the stuff you're going to have to wait on. I need to encourage somebody, they that wait. Upon the Lord, I'm going to feel like preaching in a minute, shall renew their strength. They going to mount up with wings as eagles. They going to run and not faint. Touch your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, wait on the Lord. And he will reward your commitment. The stuff worth having is the stuff worth waiting on. There is a reward for divine commitment. Jesus says, you've been walking with me for three days. I see you hungry and I know you've come from afar. Watch his concern. Here we go, elder spies. You've been walking with me for three days. If I send you home now, you're going to faint on the way. I didn't make it up. It's in the text. Uh, 
Come, come here, let me help you theologically. Faint, y'all, has two connotations. The first application of faint means the weakness of the body to the point that it collapses. But the Greek text doesn't suggest just physical fainting. The Greek text suggests to be loose, L-O-O-S-E. He says, if I don't feed you, you're going to become loose. And start doing stuff you're not supposed to. You missed all that. He says, if I don't feed you on the way home, because you desperate, you're going to engage in sin. Preach, Joel and Morgan. And if I don't give you something to hold on to, you're going to look for the right stuff in the wrong place. And they're going to start calling you loose. So he suggests, I got to feed you so that you don't become easily susceptible to sin. I got to put something in you that'll sustain you on your way home. The disciples heard Jesus' concern and they raised the question, though Jesus initiated it. Their question in verse 4 was, hey Jesus, where can a man find bread to satisfy these people here in this wilderness? Interesting. Where can a man find bread to satisfy these men here in this wilderness? I've got a problem with the disciples. I think it's actually a shame that they asked Jesus this question. Because y'all were there two chapters ago. When I had a larger crowd and smaller provision, I took two fish, five loaves of bread, and fed more people with less resources. It seemed like to me the disciples should have said, Master, what do you want us to do? Because you were there at that wedding in Cain. When they ran out of wine at the wedding and you saw me turn water into wine. So you already know I can handle shortages. And why are you questioning me about what can be done in this wilderness? What you should have did said is, if he did it before, he can do it again. So I, I want to ask you a question. This is not the first time you've been sick. Why are you sweating it? If he healed you one time, he can do it again. Here is the problem, Mama Reed. The problem is the guys are getting exposed and examined at the same time. They said, where can a man find bread to feed these, satisfy these men in this wilderness? Jesus was slick with them. Watch what he said. How many loaves do you have? Y'all missed all that. You trying to question me about where can we find bread when you the one with the bread. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get what you're doing. You want to hold on to your bread.
Because you, sir, are okay with being my disciples, but you don't want to be the lad. Because when we was at the last feeding, it was a lad who gave up his food. But now that we at this feeding, you don't want to be the one to give up your bread because you saved and selfish. Preach in here, Tolan Morgan. And you think that these Gentiles don't deserve your Jewish bread. Might I suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, that oftentimes God has to question you about the question you asking him because you are the answer to your own question. Listen at their question. Their question is, where can a man find bread in this wilderness? First of all, you're a man. Number two, you got bread. Number three, you in this wilderness. You're the answer, but you want to divert the supply to somebody else. Because sometimes the next miracle requires you to make the sacrifice. I knew you weren't going to say nothing because you're all right as long as somebody else giving and you get to sit there and sit under your little resources. You're all right as long as somebody else showing up doing the job while you get to be at home at the crib chilling. And it's always funny how critics never contribute. You always got something to say, but you ain't got nothing to give to the matter. The devil is a lie. You better stop trying to satisfy critics who have no contribution to what you're doing for Jesus. But Doc, I think you ought to do this. And I think you ought to do that. Well, I think you should just show up to church one Sunday. Why don't you do that? Because it's always interesting how these disciples, like many of us, try to divert responsibility on somebody else. Here's what I got to celebrate about God. Y'all ready? Look at Jesus. Jesus was concerned about the hungry when he's bread. Which means, y'all, compassion is the balance. Watch me. Compassion is the balance you find between being who you are and still meeting somebody else's needs who are not you. Compassion says, I am the bread of life, but I do got a heart for hungry people. Compassion says, I am not so heavenly minded that I'm no earthly good. Compassion says, I'm not so spiritually deep that I think little of people who aren't spiritual. Because if you really got God, you don't just have power in your hands, you got passion in your heart. Do I got anybody in here that will understand compassion is a miracle of compassion that expresses your heart for God? Some of the best miracles are simply acts of compassion. Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. The text says Jesus healed the sick because he was moved with compassion. Matthew chapter 20, verse 34. The text says he gave sight to two blind men because he was moved with compassion. Mark chapter 1, verse 41 he healed a man that had leprosy because he was moved with compassion. Luke chapter 7 verse 13, he raised a man right in the middle of his own funeral because the text says he was moved with compassion on the young man's mother. John chapter 11 verse 35, he stops by Lazarus' grave and the Bible says, and Jesus wept. 
and then called him out of the grave because he was expressing compassion ladies and gentlemen we are the most powerful most dangerous weapon known to humanity is to put power in the hands of somebody who has no heart That's why you got to watch people who covet positions. Because <laughs> you go in a position to execute power you ain't even got at your own house. You, you, you want a position to make up for other areas where you think you lacking in authority. You don't need power, you need a heart. Because a heart doesn't need a title to beat. A heart doesn't need a label to be who it is. A heart doesn't need that name on a door to express love for somebody. If you got a real heart for people, you're going to do it anyway. Whether they never call your name, whether they never give you a plaque, whether they never announce it, it's all about your heart and not your publicity. Ask somebody where your heart at. Where's your heart at? Where's your heart at? I know you talk in tongues, but where your heart at? I know you got gifts and you lay hands on people, but where your heart at? I want to vomit against people who shout but don't speak. Get me away from these church celebrities who got an entourage and too wonderful to speak to somebody. You're going to regret that one day because one day you're going to look up and you're going to be a lonely soul. Newsflash, you ain't all that and we know it. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? He exposes the disciples' selfishness, but he examines their willingness to be the source of the supply. How many loaves do you have? We we got seven. And uh, Mike, they didn't want to come off them seven because their loaves represented their security. We're out here in this wilderness and the one thing we need out here is bread. Jesus offers a challenge. Here's his challenge. I'm going to reward your divine commitment if you respond to a divine challenge. The first challenge was to the disciples, give me your bread. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever God tells you to give him something, can I tell you what he's trying to do? If y'all missed this, I'm sorry. Whenever God asks you to give him something, he really wants you to know, he really wants to know, will you trust him after it leaves your hand? Because what you missed is that when it shifts from your hand to his, it shifts from supply to surplus. <laughs> you, you, when, God, when God asks you to give something to him, he's simply only trying to figure out, will you trust me after it leaves your hand? Because whatever comes to my hand goes in the surplus. They gave over their seven loaves to Jesus. Jesus took it, blessed it, 
text says he gave thanks for it and dispersed it to the disciples to give to the crowd. It is the same Eucharist profile that we saw with the feeding of the 5,000. He took it, blessed it, broke it, and gave it. Took it, blessed it, broke it, and gave it. Took it, put it in his hands, blessed it, said thank you Jesus. Broke it and gave it. It is the same pattern, y'all, that we saw in the 5,000. It's the same pattern in the 4,000 because it was a prefigurement and a foreshadowing of communion. And the problem, pastor, is that the disciples thought that communion was just for the Jews. But the fact that he did the same Eucharistic profile for the Gentiles said that it's not only Jews that can sit at the communion table. But everybody that can sit there can get there. Because just like I did for them, I'm going to do for you. I'm going to take it, bless it, break it, and give it to everybody. Y'all missed it. This bread isn't just for you all. It's for everybody because this is what I'm going to do on Calvary. I'm going to put him in my hands. I'm going to bless him. Then I'm going to break him. And when I break him, he going out to everybody. Oh, but Elder, I've been talking to get to this one point. Thank y'all for your patience here. Yeah? I've been talking to get to this one point. Y'all got a Bible? You got a Bible? Covenant, and watch this. I didn't make this up. It's in your Bible. They responded to the challenge. The challenge to the disciples was to give up the bread. The challenge to the people, Q, sit on the ground. Y'all missed that. You don't appreciate that. Because with the feeding of the 5,000, he told them to sit on the grass. But he told the 4,000 to sit on the ground. Wait a minute, y'all. He's telling them to sit on the ground in preparation for a miracle. Which suggests y'all that just cause you on hard times don't mean a blessing isn't coming your way. If you hit rock bottom, it might be preparation that something great and wonderful is on the way. I don't know who I'm preaching to. You may be on hard times right now. You at ground level, but it's not the end of the story. It's preparation for what's getting ready to come. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for his people, even on hard times. High five, somebody tell me, I'm preparing for something. I'm preparing for something. And what I'm preparing for is big. Just because I'm on ground level don't mean I've been eliminated from the blessing of God. He's preparing me even in hard times. I, 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 I tried to do this text justice as I attempt every week. When I read this passage, y'all, I about ran out of my house. Watch it. Get your Bible so you won't know I'm lying. It's in the text. Y'all, follow this. He blessed the bread. They responded to the challenge. He blessed the bread, y'all, and set it before the people. The next verse says, and they had a few fishes. There's no number on the fishes. It just says they had a few. But wait, y'all. The fish were not included in the bread blessing. They had already received the bread. The fish was a second course meal.
Because in the feeding of the 5,000, he blessed the fish and the bread together. But in the feeding of the 4,000, he gave them the bread. But they never saw the fish coming. The fish was something he threw in extra. Because if you do what I tell you to do about the bread, I got a whole nother blessing that you don't see coming. Talk somebody and tell them neighbor. I'm shouting over what I prayed about. But there's some stuff I didn't pray about that's on the way. Anybody gonna give him praise for the fish blessing that's coming your way? Y'all only shout about what you prayed about. You only asked about the bread. But I got a whole nother blessing that you don't see coming because you was obedient over a few things. Do y'all know what we call that? Favor. Come here, man. Come here, man. Come here, man. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. If you got a real friend... They don't just celebrate what you prayed about. Your friendships will be tested over your fish blessings. When they start to see stuff that God decided to bless you with, you didn't fast for it, you didn't pray about it, you didn't ask about it, God just decided, I'm going to give you some more blessings. Then we're going to see what kind of friends you really got. Because there's some stuff God's going to bless you with that you couldn't have conversation with your friends about. Because it had not entered into your mind yet of what God was going to do for you. Because fish was never in the discussion until verse 7. We got full off the bread. We didn't see the fish coming. That's a whole second meal. Okay. Can I tell you what that is? Your neighbor not going to get happy until they see this. Can I tell you what the fish was? It was a now unto him. Who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or think according to his riches in glory do I got anybody in here that's on the fish level of blessing exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think You went for the job and they immediately moved you up in the management. You went to go get the car. You got your money ready to put the down payment. It ain't necessary. You can just walk off the, off the lot with it. Because I got a whole nother blessing coming that has nothing to do with what you prayed for. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why God does that? Because you ask in knowledge, he responds in omniscience. I'm going to run in here in a minute. You can only ask what you know. God always responds with everything else he knows that you don't know nothing about. So the truth of the matter is, if you hate on me, I can't even tell you why. Because the stuff you hating on, I didn't even see coming. So be careful because you tell it on yourself. I didn't even, the stuff you mad about, I didn't even pray about. I didn't even ask God for this. But if you mad, you tell it on yourself. I quit. I'm done. Thank y'all. This is it. That's it. 
The question was asked, where can a man find bread? What's the question? To satisfy these men. Y'all missed it. They didn't ask, where can we find bread to feed them? They asked, where can we find bread to satisfy them? Look this way. Have any of y'all ever had a meal that didn't satisfy you? Don't, it might be in your house. Look this way. Look this way. Look this way. Because Jesus isn't just interested in supplying what you need. He's interested in satisfying you with what he gives you. In other words, I'm not just interested in meeting your need. I want you to be happy and satisfied about what I've given you. I want you to have joy and celebration about what I've given you. And the, and the question gets answered in verse number 8. It says, and they ate and were filled. He doesn't just supply, he satisfies. Watch this, y'all. Here's the close. And he sent them away. I'm gone. I feel it right along here. His concern, y'all, was if I send them away now, they going to fall out on the way to the crib. But verse 9 says, after he fed them and filled them, then he sent them away. Y'all missed it. They can make it home because they got something on the inside that'll help them sustain on the way home. Tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I got something on the inside now that's going to help me get to my destination. For greater is he. Ooh, that's in me than he that's in the world have I got a witness here tap your neighbor on the shoulder and tell him neighbor I got something now on the inside that's gonna help me make it to where I got to be have I got a witness here I heard the Bible say that he sent them away so that when he sent them away they did not fall and they did not fail and they did not faint but they had power on the inside somebody in here is on your way home today but now you got something on the inside that's going to sustain you until you get where you're going pull on your neighbor and tell them neighbor y'all don't want to have no church here pull on your neighbor and tell them neighbor I can make it now tell them neighbor I was going to fall out but I got one testimony now, great Jehovah, I'm a pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Yeah, hold me with thy powerful hand. Bright, yes, Lord. Bright. Of the heaven, feed me, Lord have mercy, till I won't no more. I want to ask you a question Does he satisfy you? Is there anybody here that knows God satisfies and he satisfies tell your neighbor neighbor I got joy unspeakable and full of glory because I got something on the inside that won't let me fall out I got something
something on the inside that gives me joy. Now let everything, I said let everything that's got something on the inside open your mouth and give him praise. Yeah! Push your neighbor and tell a neighbor you got power on the inside and because it's on the inside you can make it to wherever you're going I believe that's why Jesus didn't stay down because he had something on the inside that let him lay there Friday night it let him lay there Saturday night but early yeah with all power in his hands I want to talk to somebody and ask you what you got on the inside tell somebody neighbor I'm filled with the Holy Ghost tell them neighbor and the joy of the Holy Ghost won't let me stay down anybody here got Papa power will give him praise the enemy thought he took you out but you pop back up because you got something on the inside now let everything I said let everything I said let everything I said let everything that's got breath yeah praise him Ain't he all right? <laughs> yeah! If you got something on the inside, can I hear this side? Tell him thank you for feeling me. Can I hear this side? Tell him thank you for feeling me. Can I hear this side? Tell him thank you for feeling me. Can I hear this side? Tell him thank you for feeling me. Can I hear the balcony? Tell him thank you for feeling me. Now let everybody tell him thank you. Tell him thank you for feeling me. Ain't he all right? Yeah. I'm done, but listen. Would you do me a favor? Do me a favor. I want you to believe God for your neighbor. Watch this. Not for the bread. I want you to believe God for your neighbor, for the fish. Just lay hands on your neighbor and say, neighbor, in Jesus' name, I'm asking God to bless you exceedingly, abundantly, 
above all you can ask a thing. Tell a neighbor, set the table. There's a fish blessing. But it's coming. Yeah. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. church right here ain't he all right give him glory cause you got extra coming you what you asked for he always gives you more than what you asked for I'm gonna open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive it father let your word become flesh now in the name of the Lord Jesus and it is so in Jesus name amen come on clap your hands this bread is for everybody this bread is for everybody everyone standing Even if you're on hard times, in a hard place, it could be that God is preparing you for how he really wants to bless you. I want to take this opportunity to offer Christ to somebody because where it all begins is trusting God with your life. Trusting God with your mind, your being, your resources, your soul, most importantly. If you can give the Lord your soul, he'll handle the rest of your life. I got some witnesses around here that if you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness, all of these things I got some witnesses around here shall be added all I need you to do is put me first follow my way I got your life handled I got your life handled I want to extend this opportunity to some man or woman, boy or girl that says, Pastor, it's me. I've never given my life to Jesus Christ, but I want to do it today. I don't want this opportunity to pass me by. I get it now. I get it. If you're here or online 
and you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus, what do I got to do? Number one, you got to be willing to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Acknowledge that his way is the best way and the only way. Number two, you've got to be willing to believe by faith that Jesus died for you and died as you. That he who knew no sin became sin, that you may become the righteousness of God. That he will reconcile you back to God, wash your sins away, make you holy and acceptable in his sight. And number three, you've got to be willing to believe by faith that after being dead for three days, God raised him from the dead. If you're willing to believe those three things in your heart and confess that out of your mouth, the Bible says you shall be saved. And today is your day to be saved. If I'm talking to you, sir, if I'm talking to you, ma'am, in the balcony, on the lower level, or online, those of you in the sanctuary, you want to receive Jesus Christ, I need you to start moving my way. With your smartphone, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. But this is your time to receive Jesus Christ. Come on. Wherever you are, don't be ashamed. Because nobody, we all had to make this decision to give our lives to Jesus Christ. Will there be one that will come and say, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want this church to be my church home. Some of you may be saved already, but you don't have a church home. I want to offer fellowship to you that this will be the place that you go and grow in God. Will there be one that will come and say, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Those of you that are online, the Spirit of God is dealing with your heart. Come on, church, we can do better than that. Those of you that are online, if I'm talking to you, the Spirit of God is dealing with your heart. Follow the information that's on the screen. Scan the QR code. Or text the keyword, join the 478-249-5426. They're coming from the balcony, church. Who else is that says, Pastor, it's me? I want to give my life to the Lord. Church, somebody give That's God praise. That's what we call you. Lift up your voice and say, Major Boy. Major Boy, the Lord of You died, you died to save. save. Come on, church, they still but coming. He, oh, 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 oh. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's yeah. what we call you. That's what we call you. They still coming, Major church. Boy. I got a whole our way of people coming. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Look at this church. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want this to be the place where I go and grow in God. It's your time and turn. Don't you miss this moment. I really cannot promise you that Sunday 
next Sunday is promised to you. This is your day. This is your time. This is your turn to give your life to Jesus. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm going to wait on him. I right, sure am. Who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me? It's me. I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to give my life to the Lord. Somebody celebrate my sister coming. Somebody give God praise for her. Who else is it? Come on. You were waiting on the first person to move. It's about 10 other people to move now. It's your time and turn. Give your life to the Lord. Let this church be the place that speaks to your heart. We've got clergy up in the balcony ready to greet you, even on the main level. Those of you that are online with the Holy Ghost, speak into your heart. Text the keyword JOIN, 478-249-5426, or scan the QR code. Jesus Christ is here, waiting on you, with his arms wide open to receive you. No matter what walk of life you come from, he'll change you into his image and into his likeness. Who else is it? Who else is it? really feel like it's somebody else here. Fellowship, ask everybody around you, are they saved? Do they have a church home? If they say no to anyone that questions, tell them you'll walk with them. Tell them don't be scared. I'll walk with you. You don't have to stand by yourself. I really just want you to receive Jesus Christ and join our church because I just think this is the best decision in your life. Make a decision for your soul. Who else is it? Come on. No, my brothers, my brothers are coming. Somebody celebrate my brother coming, somebody. I got some family coming. Somebody give God praise. You are, you are, you are. You are, you are, you are. I say you are the living word. Hallelujah. You are the living word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey church, this is never a moment where we get bored clapping on souls that are coming. I need y'all to understand what this means. If they didn't make this decision, hell would be clapping for them. But because they made this decision, heaven is coming for them. Now, 
I'm going to say this one more time. Because I just believe it may be somebody else here. Your arms are too short to box with God. And your spirit is too weak to resist God. So all I need you to do now is to trust God with your life and give your life to him. Who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me. I really need to make this decision. I need to give my life to Jesus Christ. I don't need to fight this. I don't need to live any longer without being under the ark of safety. Who else is it? It says, Pastor, it's me. In the balcony, I'm waiting on you. On the Lord level, I'm waiting on you. I don't, I don't know your name. I just really don't want you to miss this moment. I don't want you to miss this moment. I cannot guarantee you that next Sunday is promised to you. The Bible says, in the day you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Come on, this is your time. It's your turn. It's your time. They're coming from the balcony, church. I told y'all, this ain't a time to get tired of clapping. Somebody celebrate God for 19 souls. Hallelujah. Now y'all already know. I don't know why that 20th person is playing. It's one more person in here. Where you at? Come on. I see him moving. I see him moving. Hey, I see him moving. Fellowship. I ask for one. Church, y'all missed the whole sermon. We was talking about bread. Hey. And I asked for one. Look what God is doing. Hey. Oh, He's yeah. sending fish. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are the living word. You are the living word. I like him. He got his phone up like, look, look at me going to Jesus. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. My God today. Listen, y'all. Hear me, hear me. This is the most important part of the service. Souls. 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 And I don't ever get tired of fishing. Mm. Any real fisherman got patience. 
Patience. Patience. All of you who stand here, let me first welcome you to Jesus Christ. To the love of Jesus. Let me secondly let you know that I'm honored to serve as your pastor and all of these people that stand behind you are honored to be your family. Is that Mo Fish? Somebody give God praise. They're still coming. Come on, church, give God praise for them. They still coming. And they still come. And they still come. Listen. Listen. this fishing stuff real good. family in the faith now and we are honored that you're receiving Christ and a new church family and your new church family just happens to be the baddest church in middle Georgia would y'all do me a favor right in this center aisle his uh, minister, Quincy Hall, if you all will go with him in this center aisle, he'll bring you back in the sanctuary in about five, ten minutes, all right? Hey, church, put him on the red carpet. Thank God for his word. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I told y'all revival has already broken out in this church. Listen, listen, y'all, listen, y'all. We, we, we have to celebrate this because there was so much negativity about church coming off the pandemic. People wasn't going to go back to church. Nobody's going back to church. They must don't know about fellowship. Yeah. 
we goes to church around here. <laughs> and what a church it is. Come on, give God praise again. It's giving time. It's giving time. Let's thank God for that. I want to ask our ushers to come. Ask our ushers to come. Somebody said, we still in church? Surely is because people join in church. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you would like an envelope, raise your hand. This is where we share our tithes and offerings. Uh, you have on screen these options of giving and both platforms and purposes. If you're giving tithes, offerings, or you're sowing towards your uh, gold zero, Raise your hand if you'd like an envelope. We don't want anyone to be missed, even in the balcony. We don't want you to be missed. We have ushers all over the sanctuary. Those of you that are online, would you pick one of these options of giving? It was most convenient for you, and let's give now through worship. And uh, let's do it to the glory of God. This is our 44th church anniversary, and uh, we want to be faithful to the Lord in the area of our stewardship. Let's pray. Father, we honor you and thank you for your grace, goodness, and glory. As we give what you've given to us, we ask now that you receive not just the gift, but the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, ladies and gentlemen, pick one of these options that are most convenient for you. If you're like me, we're going to be using the Shelby Next app option. And... Um, Please, ma'am, and please, sir, remember when you go in, you want to manually put it on one-time gift. You want to manually put it on one-time gift. If you're giving towards um, goal zero, you'll just tap the box that says fund, and it'll drop down and show you goal zero that you may allocate your gift there as well. Amen. How many of you are grateful you got something to give? Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Those of you that are using envelopes, as you prepare your envelope, would you lift your hand so the deacons can come and retrieve your envelope from you. Deacons, would you service uh, the people at this time? In the balcony, if you're using an envelope, would you notify uh, the officials there that they may retrieve your gifts at this time? Those of you that are online, we praise God for you and your stewardship. And we pray God's blessings over your lives as well. Our e-crew members, our guests, thank God for you. What a wonderful day this has been, man. Wow. Wow. We don't want to miss anyone. Do we miss anybody? Do we miss anybody? I see a uh, hand here to my far, far left. Brittany, they're coming up the other side to your right. There you go. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our gifts. All right. Very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, very quickly. I look to see you here this coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. Uh, at 7 p.m., we're going to have church this week for our anniversary revival. You see our guests that are on screen. Pastor Frank Harris, Pastor Mark Moore, and Dr. F. Bruce Williams will be our guests this week. And we've got some other things going on this week that I'm not going to tell you about because you got to be here to see it. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Two things and we'll let you go. Two things. Number one, number one, uh, to our Trailblazers, next Sunday is Trailblazers Sunday.
I love it. I love it. I love y'all. I promise I do. I promise I do. Um, all our trailblazers, trailblazers, if you will stay after service today for about five minutes, if you will do me a favor and let's meet over here by the uh, musician's pit, all of our trailblazers, those six, age 60 and up, if you'll meet on that side uh, very quickly um, to pre some preparations for next Sunday. Amen. Amen. All right, finally, finally, everyone, I want you to give me your attention so we make sure you hear this. Um, our church is growing and uh, growth brings about some challenges at times and the current challenge is parking. I'd rather have a parking problem than no parking problem. So I need everyone to hear me. I need everyone to hear me. We've had some discussion about how we will handle parking uh, today. Today. Um, we have a particular process that we're going to try to uh, execute today to get you out of the parking lot efficiently and safely. I need everyone to please, ma'am and please, sir, follow the directions of our parking lot attendants. I know you've been a member of the church 50 years and the church only and the church only 44. <laughs> but we're going to rebuke the spirit of entitlement today. Amen. We need to get you out safely and efficiently. So that means everybody can't be going their own way in the parking lot. Also, we have had discussions with our team about how you need to be respected and treated. Amen. So I need everybody to do your part and follow the instructions of our team outside. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. God bless y'all. Bless y'all. We won't have a chance to greet you because we got our trailblazers meeting. We want to make sure you get out efficiently. Uh, as you leave today, there's also a uh, photo backdrop board outside. If you'd like to take pictures uh, for our 44th church anniversary, you're welcome to do that. Uh, just tag it uh, FBBC 44th anniversary when you post it so that we can have that all together. We thank God for all of our first time visitors. Please come back and worship with us. And again, let me celebrate the core. The core. Y'all did a fabulous, fabulous job today. Fabulous job today. Everyone standing. Fabulous job. Fabulous job. All right. I'll see y'all Tuesday. Please follow the, the directions of our team outside. If you're part of Trailblazers, if you'll just assemble over here uh, by the musician's pit, that'll be great. Let me ask the Lord's blessings on you. Everyone look this way. The Lord God bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance on you and give you peace. May he bless you in the city. May he bless you in the field. May he bless you going out and you're coming in. May the favor of God grant you what money cannot buy you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hug somebody, tell them you love them on the way out. See y'all Tuesday.